do a white glove test. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, how's your uh, black light? No, sometimes ignorance. No, <laughs> no, I'm not bringing it. <laughs> That's one thing they tell you never to do when you go to a hotel. Never take a black light to the bed, or the rest of the room, for that matter. Yeah, no, you'll just see a constellation of sperm. Oh God. <laughs> Like, dude, is that a big dipper? <laughs> big dipper of somebody else's semen. Oh, man. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Will and Drew's Gaming Retrospective. You're listening to episode 38 for the week of August 18th, 2019. I am your host, Drew, and I am joined by Virtual Reality Will. Mm, What's up, man? Dude, how are you? I'm well. I have an Oculus Quest, so uh, I'm like a kid in a candy store now. Dude, like I I am so excited that you got this thing uh, because I get to live vicariously through you. (laughs) Yeah, I can't believe I already have it. I have questions. I have all sorts of questions, some of which are not safe for work. Um, so we're not going to ask those on the air. NSFW, folks. (laughs) But man, I'm really excited for you. Congratulations. Thank you. I I can't wait to talk about it. Yeah, man. How's everything else? You doing good? Everything's well, man. I I got a nice, uh, interesting beer, um, which I have not been dabbling with lately. So it's pretty refreshing, to say the least, to to break one of these bad boys out. And it was the last beer I had in the house. So can't complain. It's a Citrus and Sunshine um, based out of Worcester, Mass., Mm. And uh, pretty low percentage, 5.0, but uh, it's good. It's crisp. It's light. It's good for the show. Sometimes you just need a refreshing beer. Yeah, you do, and I think tonight was the, the night for it. Um, I, I am partaking in a uh, lemon and lime seltzer Ooh. Fr- from Stop and Shop. Mm, you bad boy. And uh, I'm about to open up a second one in just a second. Oh, oh, oh. Ready? oh boy. If I could have silence, please. Oh, man, that was just the epitome of like a perfect open. Wasn't it? It really was like the the mic just picked that up perfectly. I just got seltzer all over my keyboard. (laughs) I knew that something had to have gone wrong with that. (laughs) It was too perfect. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, man. Well, thank you, everybody, for downloading the show. Make sure you are subscribing uh, through your favorite podcast app. We're available on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, uh, Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasts, you can find us. Uh, we're on social media at WDGR Podcast. That's on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at WDGR Podcast. Will, if somebody would like to follow you, how can they do so? Will underscore gear. And you can find me at Sciencestorm. And make sure you check out the Instagram because Will is going to be posting all sorts of sexy pictures of himself wearing this headset, mm. this VR goggleness. Fully clothed. Partially? Partially. I might have a shirt off or something. You know, it gets a little warm. Yeah, I mean, you got to show me a little nipple, man. A little nip. A little nip. Oh, man. So How I, are you? I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad it's Friday. Mm, it's this, been a has long been, week. this has been a really long week. And um, we, we recorded on Monday this week because, uh, you know, the weekend was just hectic. And if everybody recalls, I basically fell asleep on the air. Um, I I feel confident that that will not happen tonight because I do have more energy. However, um, it has been like, it has been a very long week. I have not made it home except for Monday. Um, Monday I was able to avoid traffic like completely, but every fucking day this week after Monday, like I've been getting in the door at like eight 30 and it should not be happening. (laughs) Oh gosh. Um, Two of the days I stayed late at work. One was voluntarily, one was not. And then the thir- and, and the first day, I stayed a little bit late to help out. Uh, I volunteered, and then I got stuck in traffic on the way home. Like 10 minutes from my house, they were setting up construction. Gridlock. Mm. Took me another, like, 25 minutes to get to the house. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. The following day, I stayed late, and um, I just hit traffic like elsewhere. And then yesterday I left on time and there was a fucking car fire on the highway. And of course that backed everything up for miles. Jesus. And then, uh, 
today, I didn't even make it to the highway. And I got fucking stuck in traffic trying to get on the fucking on-ramp because <laughs> a tractor trailer tried to go underneath an overpass that it was about three feet too tall for. Dude, I swear, man, it's just <laughs> always something. It's oh, always man. something. So that's been that's been my day. But I'm I'm home. I have my seltzer. I have your your VR stories. Mm. And I have this podcast and I have our, our lovely listeners and um our community that I'm so proud to be a part of. What and an optimistic great. attitude. I love it. You know, in the words of Monty Python, always look on the bright side of life. Mm, that's true. And never, so, ever let someone else ruin your day. That's right. So let's uh, let's go hit the mailbag. What do you think? Let's do it. Because, I mean, when we talk, start talking about the what are you playing, like that's a whole thing. It's a big thing of nothing, but we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, not a lot of questions this week, but thanks to Puxor for uh, sending in a couple for us. Uh, I've been playing. Yeah, I've been playing Mutant <laughs> Year Zero. Jesus Christ, that's hard to say. Can you say that for me? <laughs> Mutant. Oh, that is hard. Mutant Year Zero. Say it like three times fast. Mutant Year Zero. <laughs> Mutant Year Zero. <laughs> Mutant Year Zero. Yeah, this uh, the string of mutant and and year. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to string it together. I don't know you, why. You want to say like near mutant near zero? <laughs> yeah, mutant year zero. You got to like really like cut yourself off before you get to year. It's weird. Oh god. Um. Fuck you, pucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to write that down as a possible uh, title: mutant near. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> Myz. Uh, that's it. There you go. Uh, I'm not far in it, but so far I love the blend of real-time stealth and turn-based combat. Also, my daughter loves that it's about a duck and a pig, but the content is otherwise su not super age-appropriate. Question. It's the year 2030. Global climate change is way past the point of no return. The U.S. has been split by another civil war. John Titer is starting to think about time travel as a way of stopping it. Who's John Titer, by the way? Do you I know? don't know. We'll have to circle back to that. And Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk both claim to be Iron Man. You go to play a video game. What does your console look like? Is it still a box underneath your TV? Is it cloud-based? Is it all contained in a wristwatch with the display being a normal pair of glasses? Do gaming PCs still look like alien spacecraft? Or are alien spacecraft so common that they look like human spacecraft? Mm. Mm, what, very what a unique. fun question. Yeah, very unique, very fun question. Um, I mean, I'm going to say that I feel like just in general, when we get to that stage, we're going to have games and glasses, I would imagine, like, or something very close to it. Mm. Um, because we're, we're headed in that direction. So VR is going to be, you know, state of the art. It's not going to be a big bulky headset the way it is now. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would think that it's going to be like a Google, Google glasses kind of situation. Um, something I'm, along the, the lines of that, I would say. I was always surprised that those didn't uh, take off more than they they did. You know, like maybe maybe they came out like you know five years too early or something. I don't know. Yeah, those things were like in production in you know like a not production but in like a beta or alpha test for I want to mm -hmm. say quite some time. Yeah, and then they got basically like I don't think they're even like supported anymore i think they're basically discontinued i believe so i'm not 100 percent sure hmm. i mean i i think that the jury is still out on whether or not vr is is more than a gimmick um at least it is for me despite you know knowing that you're going to put up a good argument for it later mm. but um you know like i think there were a lot of people that were championing like 3d movies and that was the hot thing for a while and now it's really fizzled out. So um I'm I'm not convinced that VR or that sort of thing is going to go mainstream um by by 2030. Um that said it, it's it's a difficult question to answer because um as things become more powerful, they become miniaturized. So I think that the idea of a console becoming smaller and smaller, maybe to the point where it's the size of like a Chromecast or a Fire Stick, I think that's entirely possible. I think cloud-based is entirely possible. Um, I 
don't know that um, people will ever 100% stray away from the notion of having something underneath their TV, though. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like that's something that's kind of ingrained in society because like people don't just have an entire wall with a TV on it. Like even if you had like your biggest TV, like if it was ceiling to floor, I think it would be weird. Like I Mm. think people still want like something under it, whether it's, uh, you know, some sort of furniture or shelving or whatever. I can agree with that. I think, you know, the idea of things being built in, like, you know, the idea of a built-in VCR or a built-in DVD player, and those things don't even really exist anymore. But mm. when they did, a lot of people didn't like it because if it broke, it, you know, you, you usually had to replace the entire TV. True. And a lot of people didn't want to deal with that hassle, so it then became this, this idea of acquiring, you know, that separate entity, this, this separate VCR player. So... Um, you know, even the idea of like certain apps and stuff bundled into smart TVs, some people prefer Netflix on a console because quite honestly, Mm -hmm. it runs better than it does on a smart TV. A dedicated device is going, always going to run better than a combined device. You know, it just, no matter how you slice it, uh, it's just always going to be a better experience. I mean, if you're comparing two equal things, of course, obviously if you're comparing like, you know, a $10, uh, you know video game system compared to like a $500 video game system from the same era. It's no contest, you know, but yeah, man, I, I just, uh, I think the, like the idea of like maybe an Xbox or a PS five or, well, I guess it would be PS seven at that point, you know, getting smaller and smaller is possibility, but I don't think we're ever going to truly stray away from having something sitting on a entertainment center underneath our TV. Yeah, I agree. I think so. people want something like you said. Um, Pucks then goes on to ask us something about the Berenstein Bears. Um, are you familiar with this controversy? Uh, no. So basically, like everybody our age, when we were growing up, we were under the impression that Berenstein Bears is spelled with an E, not an A. And it's actually incorrect. It's actually with an A. Okay. Do you know who the Berenstein Bears are? Uh, it's, you know, looking at this photo now, like something is ringing a bell. It's like this, uh, children's series of books. I was never like a big fan of them growing up, but, um, it's a thing. And, uh, apparently we were all fucking stupid when we were kids. Okay. Yeah. I, I always remember people saying like the Bernstein, the Bernstein bears, but it looks like the correct pronunciation is Baron Stain? Yeah, I, I always thought it was Stain as well. So we're not lizard people, pucks. We're, nor- <laughs> we're, we're normal. So. <laughs> so why is this why is this a thing right now? I don't know. Like I remember seeing it as a meme um, a while back, and it was like this whole thing is like um, basically you know just our, how our mind kind of fills in the blanks and see things how we want them to be seen. And then, of course, people are like, no, no, no. It was always spelled this way. And then somebody's just trying to cover it up. So they erased its existence from the Internet. <laughs> I just I just saw your comment. I'm probably going to skip this one. And then somebody put like a detective emoji. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad you said that because I don't really I'm not prepared for this. Uh, the, the second part of the question here. And I am yeah. You know what, Pucks? I'm glad that you said feel free to ignore this one. <laughs> um, I just noticed that now. So uh, just respectfully, I'm going to 100% ignore this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, goodness. Uh, anyways, folks, if you want to send in a question to the show, send us an email at WDG, uh, just WDGRpodcast at gmail.com or swing on by our Discord room. Uh, there is a link in the show notes where you can uh, check it out and uh, leave a comment, leave a question for us. We'd love to hear from you. Yes. Um, so, man, let's let's just dive into it. What have you been playing? Not much, man. Um, besides the quest, which I kind of unloaded and started up today, nothing. Mm. Um, I, you know, I was really hoping to dive into some stuff this week, but uh, I've had some stuff going on, so it's been a little bit challenging. Mm. Um, and I know it has for you as well, but... Uh, you know, we're uh, we're focusing in. We're we're trying to figure out what's going on, and I, I think we're both in the same boat. And again, with the quest, it's it's really kind of sparked my uh, 
my initiative to get back into uh, just some solid gaming. Mm. Well, I haven't played anything all week, so let's talk about the quest. Sure. All right. Um, um, let's let's dive into that. Tell me, tell me, tell me everything. Tell me, like, I want to know how you felt when you realized that the postman had finally delivered that package. Mm. Um, I remember coming back from, I think, the dentist. Yeah, I had a, I had a dentist appointment. I, I drove back to the house and I saw it outside, and I was just like, "Oh man, I know that's it. I just know it's it." And sure enough, I saw the box. It said New Egg. That's where I got it from. And um, yeah, got inside, you know, popped that bad boy open. And a uh, beautiful box, you know, kind of came downstairs, opened it up. And, you know, just your traditional unboxing, you know, opening everything up, smelling things, appreciating how, you know, nice and new it is. And uh, the ease of setting this thing up was just remarkable. Before you get in that, can we circle back to the smelling things? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's like when you uh, when you get something new, like a new video game or anything new. I usually like you enjoy the aromas of a nice new product. At mm. least I do. Yeah, I mean, I, I I do too. Even though like my brain is fully cognizant of the fact that I'm smelling chemicals and plastic, <laughs> but 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 it it does like I don't know, man. It's it's a familiar scent. It is. It is. And it's quite common with any kind of new electronic. It's it's just a very familiar smell. And I think you're right. It's got something to do with like just, I don't know, maybe the, the motors inside and just like the plastic just has a very unique scent mm-hmm. to it. But either way, satisfying. Um, and what a breeze to set this thing up, man. It's it The controllers, there's two. Um, and they run on one AA battery each. So mm. very minimal. Um, okay. The little covers slide off very easily, and then they sort of magnetically go back, which is really cool. Like, I wasn't expecting it just kind of, like, sucked back in, and I was like, whoa, that was cool. Hmm. Um, it came with batteries, which is nice. Um, I think we're now in a time period where batteries do come with most things. Um, what kind of batteries does it use? Double A's. Okay. Yep, double A's. Um, so I got two of those, and... Uh, I did have to charge the, the headset for a while. Um, it pretty much was dead out of the box, which was a little shocking because, again, I think we are living in a world where most things are, like, at least a quarter of the way powered. Mm. Um, but not this time. This time I had to I had to charge it for a while. Very long charging cable, which pleased me because then I realized, okay, if this thing's running low, I can plug in and still play. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had that thing charging for a while, and... Um, Never even got around to it the first day that I, I got it. I basically just unboxed it, charged it, looked at it, downloaded the app. Because the way this thing works is you it forces you to download the Oculus app from the App Store. Okay. And that app is used to help you get this thing started. Get it up and running, get your Wi-Fi set up, get your username, all that kind of jazz. So just to kind of clarify, this does not connect to your computer in any way. It connects to nothing besides your Wi-Fi. Huh. Okay. So, does the phone like act as a bridge, or how, how does all that work? I don't think so. I think the uh, the app is literally just for like initial setup for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that your phone could essentially be you know in a different room or out the fucking window, ran over. It doesn't matter. Once the thing's set up, uh, this does not require the phone. To my knowledge, it does not require it whatsoever. When you have an opportunity at some point, um, I would love to have you try uninstalling that app and seeing how everything still functions. Just out of curiosity. Yeah, I'm sure it functions just fine, but um, I I will certainly try that for you. Um, So yeah, once uh, I did have to go out to dinner, so I never got around to playing, but I did unbox it, or not, excuse me, not unbox it. I finally played it this morning, Mm. um, knowing that this thing was going to be fully charged. And uh, the... You know, without kind of getting into that, real quick, I just want to mention, again, no wires, no PC needed, completely wireless here, folks. Like, I I know that some people might be thinking, well, there's got to be a catch. There really isn't. And that's a remarkable thing with this thing is, like, once it's up and once it's charged, everything is stored inside of the headset. So there's obviously some kind of, like, flash drive or hard drive. There's something going on within it. Um, There's, I want to say, one, two, three. I think there's four cameras in each corner. So there's one, two, three, four, each corner of the, the outside front face of the headset. Mm. Um, and though that's for the, the room tracking. And uh, apparently the Quest uses 
tracking with those cameras, meaning that the Rift S uses like uh, these little sensor things that Tom had that have to be mm. posted up in the room, kind of like speakers, like surround speakers. Kind of like what uh, the Wii used for the remotes. Yeah, something like that. And um, with this, it doesn't require any of that. And in fact, once you get up and running and you set up, you can actually draw, like a, you can virtually draw like a, a play space, like a grid of like how much room you have to work with. And even if it's not the recommended uh, amount of room, you can still use it. So it's not huh. like it's going to flag you and be like, oh, you got to move stuff around or like you better find like a bigger spot. It'll work with the space you have. Hmm. Um, so, you know, usually you just have to move a few things around, create like sort of an open floor space and you're good to go. Um, but yeah, initial setup was pretty much just that, setting up grids and, and play spaces. And then uh, you get this, you know, traditional tutorial of like how to play VR and how to function in games, like basic functions, like picking things up, throwing them, releasing, gripping, shooting stuff. What is, so you have like uh, these handheld things, right? Yes. For this as well. Can yes. you describe those to me? Yeah, they're, they're pretty interesting looking. They're, um, I, you can't really compare them to any kind of like classic video game controller really at all. Um, the closest thing would maybe be like the, I think it's the, um, is it the Wii Chuck? Uh huh. Right, like the original Wii, it had like the Wii Chucks. I think that's what they were called. Yeah, the yeah the attachment where it had like the analog stick. Yeah, so it's kind of like something similar to that, where it has an analog stick that's quite small on each controller. Each controller mm -hmm. is identical, but one is specifically for your left hand and one is for the right. So there's a couple buttons that are positioned slightly differently um, based on that uh, setup. But okay. yeah, it's uh, two analog sticks, one on each one, and then you have, I believe it's X and A, so there's two buttons, and then you have a grip, and then you have a trigger. And okay. the grip is just like the trigger, it's just on the, the side of the controller, so it allows you to grip things, um, okay. or mimic that kind of motion. And then uh, there's like a weird, like circular, like halo kind of situation that surrounds the buttons and stuff, so it's almost like a protector. I'm not really sure if it's like to kind of protect your thumb from flying out. I'm not sure. There must be some reason why they're like that. Hmm. Um, maybe it's for tracking purposes. I really don't know. But um, it's just cool. They're, they're kind of futuristic looking and they come with like a little strap too. So like you can put the strap, of course, over your wrist so that way you don't have a, you know, a wee moment like back when they didn't <laughs> have that and you're breaking TVs and shit. Hey, Lauren. I broke the TV again. Yeah, it's fucking cracked. <laughs> Look at this shit. It's spider glassed. Um, but yeah, it uh, it has those. I haven't used them. My my cat's swatted at them a couple times, so I have to hold them if he's around. Yeah, um, which is kind of annoying, but it is what it is. And uh, yeah, I mean, just the setup alone, man, was like so much fun. Like you're you're kind of in this really cool like opening sequence. It, it kind of reminded me of like. I don't know, Fantasia in a way, like sort of a Disney movie where like it opens up and it's got this sort of or orchestral fun music and there's like this little like Navi kind of like fairy type of situation from like Zelda that floats around. You watch it and it just starts putting life into this world around you. So you see like purple grass and this big 3D like geometric like whale floating above you. Just like really cool yeah. shit to kind of yeah. get you like amped up. And, uh, you know, you start out with just, like, picking things up, picking things up, like little paper airplanes already built for you, so you can pick those up and fly them. And mm -hmm. it sounds gimmicky, and a lot of it is, but it's still fucking cool, man. And, like, call me easily impressed, but I was really enjoying that that uh, part of the, the setup. I think it's important with a tutorial to make something that's user-friendly for all audiences, and it sounds like this is, you know, perfect for that. It is. It's very family friendly. I mean, obviously, there are some games that, are, as far as I know, are pretty gory, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, the the setup alone very family friendly. Um, mm -hmm. And then once you're past that, uh, then it's onto the menu, and you you have a very easy to navigate menu. Um, so you have like a basic home page with like, you know, like stuff that you can look at, like. Uh, popular apps and games and like here's netflix if you want to download that it's basically like your traditional dashboard okay um and then you have like this little menu that more or less stays popped up the whole time on the bottom and um it's very star trek like i'm sure you would appreciate that yeah 
excuse me. And um, you can go to things like library, sh- uh, store, um, settings. It, there's nothing really on there that's like groundbreakingly different. It's just normal shit. But it's very easy to use and it's very intuitive and I like that. It's not complicated. So like uh, purchasing games is done through the headset. Yes. So once you have um, like a credit card stored on the device, which I did like in the beginning phases of the setup, um, Mm -hmm. that's stored obviously. So like once you go ahead and make purchases, there'll probably be some kind of confirm button that you just hit just to make sure that you're going to get charged and everything just starts downloading. And um The headset that I got is a 64 gig, and then I believe there's 128, I want to say, after that. So I went with the 64 because it was a little less money, and um, I don't anticipate having, like, a ton of stuff downloaded. If I start running out of room, I usually just, you know, on my PS4, I delete a game, and then I I make room for the next one. I'm I'm not really one of those guys that's like, oh, I got to go and get, like, a, you know, 8 terabyte terabyte hard drive get this thing in there and and just like make it work so does this device have like um any kind of external um storage or or like can you put like an sd card in it and expand the storage that's in there i don't think so um there's a little port for the charging cable there's a volume rocker um there's a little thing that i'm still trying to figure out it basically just spaces the um the viewfinders in and out so i think it's more based on eye shape so if you have mm. eyes like george bush jr and they're super beady and close together you can you can get this thing <laughs> you can get this thing you know slid in basically and you can watch the viewfinder actually slide together and then when you slide it out you can watch the viewfinder slide back out again and uh mm. it's it's sort of like enveloped by fabric um which is kind of interesting a lot of the headset is fabric based okay um which is kind of neat and it's probably just to you know have it weigh less um it does have a little bit of weight to it like so you you really have to the biggest thing with it is like you really have to play around with it in terms of finding your sweet spot in terms of being in the right view and, and not having any blurriness and just kind of having things like be clear and right. that's the only complaint I have is that you really have to fiddle with it and you have to adjust the straps, which, by the way, are, are very nicely adjustable, top mm. and sides. It's all like a Velcro, but it's like very high quality, um, very sleek. And it's basically like a rubber like head grip thing. And it's, it's not even that complex. It fits on your head quite nicely. It's snug. And there's also like a little glasses spacer that I put in. And it helps if you wear glasses so you're not pressed right up against the uh, the lenses. That was my next question. Um, you know, how, how is it to wear with glasses? It's surprisingly because comfortable. The um, the one experience that I had with VR at uh, um, RPM uh, Speedway was questionable. Like, I kind of, like, struggled to get my face in there with the glasses. But without, like, I couldn't see without them. I needed them. Yeah. Yeah, and that yeah. was a concern that I had and uh, initially, and I just thought, whatever, I'll just make it work. But once I found out there was a glass of spacer, I was like, oh, this is great. And basically, mm. the way that you install that is you just take out the the little foam like viewfinder thing, like the comfort pad. You pop yeah. that out, put the glass of spacer in. It's basically just like a little plastic attachment, and you pop that in. Then you pop the original thing back in, and um, you know. It, it creates some form of space. Not much, but enough to, to cover your basic, you know, mm. pair of glasses. So that's uh, nice. It's a nice feature. So um, sound-wise, it has, uh, I believe it has, like, binaural sound of it of its own. It's quite interesting because you can't see the speakers. They're, they're hidden in there somewhere. And mm. uh, it's really good sound, really good sound. There's actually two headphone jacks on this thing, too, one on each side, which allows you to, you know, obviously plug in, you know, on your left or right depending mm-hmm. on which one you prefer. And um, yeah, I would say even without that, man, the sound is good. Like it's very, it's like one of those kind of sound situations that it mimics surround sound, but obviously mm-hmm. it isn't. Um, so it creates that virtual space and um, no pun intended, but it, uh, <laughs> You're yeah. So funny. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's, um, it's really good. I'm very impressed with the sound. Like I said, Visuals are great once you hit that sweet spot and you can get this thing on your head and and stop it from sliding. Because Mm -hmm. if you don't have things adjusted, you're going to be like, oh, this is bullshit. This thing slides. It's not not the uh, VR headset's fault. You just have to 
adjust it accordingly and get this thing to be like really snug like on the back of your skull as, as weird as that sounds you really just have mm. to kind of play around with it make sure that it's sitting sort of on your brow and when you get that sweet spot you'll know where it is and you'll just know the difference but yeah again going back to my one complaint i have about two complaints about this thing but my first complaint is finding the sweet spot is a little bit challenging and mm-hmm. keeping it there can sometimes be a little bit irritating. Um, and then the second complaint is something called uh, the screen. I think it's a screen door. Yeah, the screen door effect. Now, what's, what's that? The screen door effect is something that I knew about, but I didn't know it was called that. So when I tried the Oculus Rift S at Tom's house, I noticed the same kind of problem. It it felt like a lot of the visuals were sometimes kind of like just not quite crisp and clear and there were some blurry aspects and there was just sort of this weird, not really a haze, but just like, it's almost as though you were just looking at a screen that just like there was something like, imagine like watching a video and it's like buffering like just enough where it's like not completely clear, but like Mm. it's got like a slight like haze to it. It's, it's sort of like that, but they call it the screen door effect. And what they mean by that, the community, I guess, that's complained about this, is it's like you're viewing things through like uh, like a bug screen, like on a window. Okay. So if you can imagine that, it's not that intense because when you look through a bug screen, like you can definitely tell you're looking through one. But right. this is like a very, very, very fine bug screen. And... It's enough to, like, where you notice it, and once you notice it, you can't, like, not notice it. And uh, apparently it's quite a big problem for, like, almost every VR headset except for the Samsung Odyssey Plus, apparently, has, like, a higher, um, you know, aspect ratio or pixels or whatever, and um, can support, like, 4K and all this crap. Okay. But, uh... That's the that's the only thing that's a little disappointing about this thing, and it's it, it was present with the Rift S, which is computer powered. So um, that means that it's got something to do with the viewfinders themselves. So, so this device is it's an Oculus, right? Yep. Does Samsung also make an Oculus as well? No, they make a. I, I, they might make more than one headset, but I know they make something called the Odyssey Plus. Okay. And apparently that has really good resolution. I wasn't it, sure if um, like Oculus was outsourcing kind of like Android, you know, outsources to other manufacturers. Uh, not that I know of. I, I, I don't know enough. I know that Oculus is owned by Facebook, which I learned yeah. like very recently. Mm-hmm. Um, surprise! Yeah, yeah, I guess it shouldn't be that much of a surprise because Facebook owns a lot. Um, but anyway... Those are the only two complaints I have with the thing so far, and they're not game breaking. Like the sweet spot thing, and like looking through the screen, you get used to it. It still looks amazing. Um, yeah. There are certain like you know when you go into like Netflix VR or uh, Netflix or just any kind of video app, and you're looking at like a real human, like a you know video. It, yeah. uh They look good. They look really good. It looks like they're right there in the room. It's pretty intense. Um, but yeah, it's just. There's that very, very fine mesh that it's almost like you're looking through. And I think this we're just in the early phases of, of VR. I think that's really what it is. It kind of, like, the way you're describing it sounds to me kind of like um, that visual that you have if you put, like, a screen protector over your phone. Yeah, or it's kind of like, um, you know how, like, in Mass Effect 1, there was an option to uh, put on, like, that static mode? Yep. It's mm-hmm. it's kind of like that, but like very very subtle. Hmm. That would definitely uh, be distracting. Yeah, it is. So what um what games have you tried? Um, I would say at this point just Beat Saber the demo, mm-hmm. um, which is a lot of fun, and I'm probably gonna buy that game because it's uh, you know. It's just a very, like, well-regarded game. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of fun. Like, the demo is just one song, and I'm sure most people know what that game is by now. You just hit blocks as they come towards you in the direction, and you Mm -hmm. have to hit it with, like, the red or blue saber. Um, So it's a lot like Guitar Hero or... uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Guitar Hero or uh, Rock Band. 
Uh-huh. So it's it's very similar to that. Um, I've, I've always wanted to try that game. Uh, Beat Saber? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like it. Like the first time I saw that, I was just like, holy shit, what is this? You know, like I have to play this. Well, it's funny because I'm pretty sure like when that game trailer came out, like at E3, like, I don't know, one or two years ago, whatever, like whenever it was debuted, I'm pretty sure people were like, uh, what? Like, what the fuck is this dumb game? Like, mm. <laughs> you know, a lot of people are just like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, what is this? It's just right. stupid. We want something like real. And I'm pretty sure that I don't think it's even on the PSVR. I think it's still just like PC or, or just Oculus format. I could be wrong, but... um, Looking it up now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it looks like a ton of fun. Robo Recall is another game that Tom recommended. Um, that's uh-huh. gaining a lot of popularity, and it's made by the same devs as uh, Bulletstorm, which I played at Tom's. Um, so I'm probably going to get that one. I think Pucks or Joe mentioned Moss, which I believe you play as a mouse or you play as something that accompanies a mouse. M-O-S-S? Uh, M-O-S-S, yep. And uh, I'm trying to think if huh. there's anything else. Uh, Vader Immortal, I believe it's the name of the game. looks pretty cool. Um, you got to so, try um, Super Hot. Yes, and Super Hot. Tom said that he couldn't recommend that game enough, even though it looks like very simplistic and kind of strange. Um Apparently it's is really really good. So I I can vouch for the um, regular you know console version of it, not in VR, and it is like a ton of fun. Really, it, it's really worth your time, even without the headset. I can only imagine with the headset. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to play Tetris Effect in VR, but I'm pretty sure Ooh. that's just for the uh, the PSVR. Uh, I believe it is. Which is really disappointing because that in VR would just be tremendous. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Apparently it's available on Windows. Uh, yeah, so... I don't so know how that Tom that could play it then. I can't. I'm looking at the Tetris Effect website. Yeah, it's available on the Epic Games Store, so they're kind of locking that out. So, yeah, that that's disappointing, this whole fragmentation of of stuff especially when like you have vr which is you know like oculus is is making the device that you are using right like you should have access to any game that oculus is supporting yep yeah it's uh you know i will i will say actually that's my third complaint um Mm. is the fact that a lot of these games that i want to play like lone echo and lone echo 2 Mm -hmm. um they're just for the Rift S and it's because, or not just the Rift S, but they're for like PC VR headsets because like they need the power to run the game. And that's completely okay. fair, but it just sucks that like with the uh, Quest, it's yeah. a powerful device and there are just certain games that they're just not supported, um, at least not yet. So we'll have to see. How much was this? Uh, $399. Ooh. Yep. Um, which I believe is the same price as the Rift S right now, like the same like size. But the difference is, is obviously if you don't have a PC, you're going to be spending about, you know, potentially $1,400 on the Rift S. Yeah. I mean, you know, the barrier entry on something like that, you need to have the hardware to run it, you know, you do. And, and with the quests, you don't, and I think that's why it's it's gaining so much popularity right now. It's funny too because, like, you mentioned that you were going to buy. It. You remember you seeing you say that you ordered it, and literally the next day I saw a commercial for it. Yeah, it's I'd never it's heard really of it. taken off. I had never heard of it before. Yeah, it came out. Um, I want to say in like May, so it's still like really new. Okay. Um, and there are some, you know, apps I believe that are only finally like, you know, putting like little ads up saying like, Oh, this supports the quest now. So there's a lot of like things that there's a lot of like, um, momentum and advertisement or advertising on the quest. Um, just because a lot of people that have a rift have like the original rift, a rift S or they have like an Oculus go, or they have like a Google cardboard. And I've learned a lot about VR just in the course of like one to two days. Hmm about like what other headsets exist like the Vive and the Vive Pro and 
there's even a Valve um, VR headset, um, which apparently is like crazy expensive. I wonder who uh, who the main so is it like? Did Valve create it? Like, is it their hardware or? I is think it they like... did, man. I think they huh. did. It's the Valve Index, is what it's hmm. called. Um, and on Amazon, it's going for about fourteen hundred. Actually, no. I'm sorry. That's the HTV Vive is going for fourteen hundred, and the Valve Index is. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see here. Boom! Boom! Is this thing out? I'm sure it is out. Uh, seven fifty. No, <sighs> no, it's a thousand. It's a thousand if you get the kit. So if you don't have a PC, you could be looking at about two thousand dollars if you want to play with the Valve Index. Wow. Because and that's just me making a guesstimate that most PCs now, if you want something decent, it's going to be about a thousand. Yeah, I mean, you can get away with a fairly decent uh, gaming PC for about a thousand bucks. You know, um, I'm I'm actually browsing the uh, Oculus subreddit right now. And I'm trying to see, like, you know, what kind of posts there are, because I've never, never really looked into this. And it's definitely some stuff about, like, uh, you know, previews for new games that are coming up. So I'm going to shoot you a link for this. And I definitely think you should bookmark it, because I think it's going to be a great way for you to keep your eye on the pulse of, of what's going on. Yeah, for sure. Uh, wow. That's crazy, man. I'm really happy for you. I'm glad you got it finally. Yeah, I think it's the right move for me. I actually spoke to Tom on the phone. He called me uh, today just to kind of chat about it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he had some great advice and great tips on what games to get and things like that. And he had mentioned that the Quest, I think, is a great uh, fit for me and anyone who's trying to get into VR at, like, a slightly advanced level. Um, I think the Quest is a good, like, medium point. Like, if yeah. you're... If you don't want to go and get, like, a fucking Google Cardboard or, like, a Gear or, like, a Daydream, um, some of those, like, entry-level VR systems that are kind of, like, meh, um, the Quest is the right move. The following choice would be the Rift S. Um, And then after that, you know, now you're going to venture into what I call high-end VR systems, like the Valve Index, um, the HTC Vive Pro, um... There's another company, I can't remember the name of it now, I think it's like Pentax or something like that, I'll pull it up here in a sec, and they're making, I believe, I think it's an 8K VR system, and uh, crazy expensive. I can only imagine. And I don't believe they're even out yet, let me just double check here. So it is a company called, where is it? Ah, Pmax. Never heard of them. Um, their 5K OLED VR virtual reality headset um, is 959 And, again, that pretty much comes with, like, nothing. So uh, that's kind of where you're at. Like, you know, if you don't go with a Quest um, or a Go, then you're pretty much, as far as I know, like, stuck with having to have a PC. Right. Because um, I believe these are one of the only two that don't support like a phone having to go into the viewfinder that would not require a PC. I'm pretty sure all of the other ones that don't require a PC use your phone itself. That has to be like slid in to like the, the thing for it to actually start working. Huh? But I, I tell you what, man, just today alone, I learned a lot about how many different headsets there are and like how, the Rift and the Oculus itself, just as a company, they are not the top tier company. They're one of them, but right. there's some pretty serious shit that's coming out and some stuff that's out now that like most people don't know about at all. And these are catering to people that are like VR enthusiasts, which could yeah. be me someday. I mean, it's like that with anything PC related to, you know, um, when, when you venture outside of like the standard console marketplace, you're getting into like enthusiast territory and it's very easy to spend a fuck ton of money in a hurry if you're not careful. Yeah, it, it's yeah, you can really like if I wanted to and I was being kind of ignorant and I just wanted the best of the best, 
I could have bought the best of the best on like a crazy expensive computer. And then I would have realized that like maybe somewhere down the line I, I made a mistake or something else was coming out and it was better or I didn't have to spend that much. So you, if you're going to go down this road for anybody listening, just be careful, do your research mm. and find out what's best for you. Don't just get the most expensive option because you might regret it. Like some of these, uh, expensive VR headsets, like take a lot of like troubleshooting and a lot of time to set up correctly. One final question for you. Yes. What is going to be the first game that you actually purchase? Um, I honestly think it's probably going to be, oof, it's either going to be Beat Saber or Robo Recall, um, yeah. because Robo Recall just looks fun as shit. I, I watched somebody play it on a, on a stream not that long ago. Um, but Beat Saber is really a, a big toss up as well because Lauren, you know, if I factor her in, I think that she's really going to enjoy that game. So it would be something that would get played a lot. Yeah. Because um, it's a, a very addictive game, whereas Robo Recall might be something that only I would play. Right. Um, so, those are the top two at the moment. Um, you know, if I had the chance of getting Lone Echo, obviously that would be number one. Because, uh, you know, it's space, and we all know how I feel about space stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> pillows. But uh, <laughs> I wasn't going to go there. But yeah, no. I went there. <laughs> um, by the way, it was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I'm hoping that down the road in the near future, Lone Echo and some of these games will get ported or they'll be able to be, uh, playable on the quest. And I'm pretty confident that there'll be an update or something like that, because I think right now, a lot of these games are not tapping into the quest's full potential. Cause from what I understand, it's a pretty strong system that's, uh, that's buried within this thing. Very cool. Man, I'm I'm really excited to hear like more and more as as you uh, start uncovering like what the thing is capable of. Yes, I am excited right. as well. Very cool. Thank you for uh, for taking the time to share that, man. You made my job as a podcaster super easy. I just sat back and let you talk. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely something but, I can waffle on about. But no, I mean it's fascinating because like I like to kind of hear about things like this, and you know I had a lot of questions, that, and you know quite frankly like. I don't have a ton of interest in VR, so my urge to go find a lot of these answers on my own was kind of low. Um, so to have somebody with some experience with it uh, kind of like, I don't want to say sell me on it, but at least get my interest a little higher than it was. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was, was pretty cool, you know? Well, I think like when we hang out, um, I'll be able to bring it or, yeah. you know, if you come here, you'll be able to experience it yourself. So uh, that's the nice thing. It's not like I have to transport a Rift S, you know, yeah. over, over to your house, which would just be a, a giant hassle. So, yeah, I think uh, just trying it more, maybe going to Spark VR, um, you know, I think just kind of getting back into it and giving it another chance and playing the right kind of games might be something that would be a, a potential selling point. Definitely. Well, I still want to check that place out with you. Yes, for sure. I, it's still on my list. Yeah, so so that was another question I had. I, I guess you never made it over there. I mean, no, I, I didn't. Um, I was planning on going this week, and once I picked up the quest, I just thought, you know, well, what's the point now? You know, I'm going to be able to mm. do this from home. Um, but I still think I want to go uh, because I want to experience what headsets they have there um, so I can kind of, you know, weigh out the pros and cons and kind of see what the, the difference is between them and uh, just experience some games that maybe I just can't get uh, on the quest, so... It's still worth a, a visit, without a doubt. Very cool. Very cool, man. Well, let's see here. Oh, what did you just send me? What is this? Oh, it's just a... It's the Quest... Um, oh, this is the product page? Product page, yep. I did you get it, a free gaming mouse with it? I didn't, because um, I... I think I, like, unchecked that, because I was just oh. like, you know what? Even though this thing's free, I'm never going to use it. So mm. I just didn't bother. I wonder if it was, like, one of those shitty rebate things anyway. Newegg does a lot of those. Yeah, it probably was where like it didn't even it probably doesn't even come with it. You got to like fucking send some shit in. So right, right. Man, that's crazy. Cool, cool. Well, I don't really have anything new to talk about. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to just get into the game? Yeah, we could do that. 
So uh, we're gonna we have a new game that we're gonna play this week. Um, it's similar to Metacritic Madness, but this one is sent in by uh, a friend of the site, Raffy Fatfingers, who who crafted, came up with the idea for this game, and then built the fucking thing for us to play. Um, so neither one of us have had to do any work <laughs> on setting this thing up. Yep, I'm, fa- I'm very excited because I'm a lazy sack of shit. Yeah, you know that that makes two of us, man. And, you know, with with that kind of stuff, I just don't have the, uh, I don't know, I just don't seem to have the energy or the motivation to to construct a game the way that Raft did. And to think that mm-hmm. he had the time as well, you know, considering he has quite a busy life, uh, is is quite remarkable. Yeah. So this is Playtime Pandemonium. And uh, I'm going to read the uh, directions for you here. And uh, Will, I need I need you to follow along with me here. I know I'm how following. you struggle. You struggle with rules, buddy. But I do. I think we're we're going to nail this one. All right. We both guess. Uh, so basically, uh, what we're doing is instead of looking at game ratings on Metacritic, uh, we're looking at how long to beat dot com and guessing how long the main story of a game takes to beat. Okay. Uh, we both take a guess for each game. We alternate who goes first, and this is in that spreadsheet, which uh, do you need a link for that so you can follow along? Sure. I'll send that over to you now. Um, the idea is it's the main story only. No speed runs, no achievements, no nothing. Okay? And we we go back and forth asking each other, but we both guess. And just like Metacritic Madness, if you guess a game is, say, 10 hours long and it's actually six hours long, then you get four points and the lowest number of points at the end wins. Um, so, yeah, uh, the, there are links to each one of these uh, games in this post that he set up for us. And I have not clicked on any of them. Uh, you should not click on any of them either because it will reveal the answers. Okay. Um, and I guess we just go back and forth. So I guess we can kind of alternate who's reading this since uh, we have a yellow or so the way he set it up. Um, so you'll you'll answer first and then I'll answer. But we both answer for each one. OK. So let's start it out. Uh, thanks again, Raph, for, for setting this up. Let's see how it goes. It's Playtime Pandemonium, everybody. Man, I wish I had some cool sound effects right now. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, first game up is Max Payne from 2001. Uh, and this description comes straight from the back of Raf's box, uh, the game that launched the opioid crisis. An undercover cop channels his inner Neo to dodge, dip, dive, duck, and dodge his way past the bullets of his enemies and former friends to uncover the truth behind the stupid dream levels with an annoying crying baby. I mean, to uncover the truth behind who framed him for the murder of his partner. <laughs> um, all right. So I'll go first then with the guessing here. Yep. Um, mm, I'm going to go with eight hours. So you're going to say eight hours. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking that this is, I'm going to say 12 hours Okay. for this game. So let's go over here and click on the how long to beat link. All righty. And let's see what we got here. Eight and a half hours. Nice. Wow. So um, I guess 0. 0.5 for you. And uh, let's see here. 12. Oh, shit. Now I got to do math. 12 minus 8.5. Three and a half. It's late. Shut up. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> All right. You're up. All right. So we have Tomb Raider from 1996. Original. Um, Peru, Egypt, Atlantic, Triangular, Hoots, Short Shorts, <laughs> Revolvers, <laughs> Tigers and Atlantis run and gun and poke out the eyes of your enemies in this action adventure thrill ride. Oh man. Um, this, I never got into the Tomb Raider series all that much. The new ones are pretty good, but uh, those triangular hooters, man. I know. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> Fucking grandma uh, Raph. I'm going to say this is 10. Mm. Um, that's a good guess. I was probably going to go with that, too. Ah, Tomb Raider 1. Mm. I mean, I guess you could guess the same number. I, I, I mean, there's nothing stopping you. Yeah, I'll go with... Uh, I'm going to go with 11. 11? All right. Let's click on that fancy link. How long to Ooh. beat? 15 and a half. 
Damn, I had this weird feeling, man, that it was longer. Wow, so 15.5 minus 11 is four and a half. You're, you're kicking my ass so far. Which is, I guess, is about time, right? Yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> so I'm at 5.5. Yeah, so far you're winning. Uh, nine points, Drew. Five points for Will. Lowest score wins. All right, so let's go on to Bioshock. This is one of my favorite games of all time. Creepy little emo girls in an underwater city. Shock and bio your way <laughs> through, through the creepy and moist city of Rapture where you battle Alice in Wonderland cosplay rejects and bears in 1960s scuba gear with drill hands. Why you're in the city? Nobody knows. Shut up, Joe. Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Joe, you're gonna have to exp- you're gonna have to explain that to us, buddy. Yeah, I'm curious. All right, um, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with 18 hours. Yeah, that's a pretty good guess. Um, I'm trying to remember. I, did you play this game back? No. When it came out? No? no, I did. And the problem is, is like I'm one of those guys that like gets everything you possibly can, so. Um, I'm going to say 15. Okay. So you said 18? Yeah. All right. Let's see what we got here. 12 hours. Wow. A lot wow, shorter take, than I thought. I'll take that W. So you got six points. I got three. All right. I'm catching up to you. 12 to 11. Will. Fair. Uh, all right, man. All right. So we're looking at Chrono Trigger. Uh, Classic game here, 1995. Uh, time traveling adventure. Time traveling adventure with your chivalrous frog buddy, Brobot, the magnanimous Magus, and more. Stop the evil lava beetle from. Well, I don't. Well, I don't what he's doing, but it's bad. Beetles are he bad. Probably meant, yeah. He probably meant. I don't know what he's doing. I right. I don't know. Lava beetles are worse. Kill the beetles. Um. Uh. So, let's see here. I've never actually beaten this game. I've started it like a million times. I've actually never played it. I, I have it for uh, for PS One actually. Mm. Not the best version. Really? Yeah, there's uh, some really really rough loading times on that one. Oh, that um, sucks. I mean, it's good. Uh, it's it's better than not having the game at all. But uh, the Nintendo DS is kind of like the best version of the game actually. So huh, interesting. I'm, I'm going to throw down 40 hours, 4 0. Oh, okay. That's a lot. Um, it's an RPG. Yeah, no, you're right. I'll go with 35. 35? I have a feeling I overshot here. Uh, let's see what we got. Go to the link. Go to the link. Ooh, way over. 23. More for the completionist, you were, you were good. I guess so. You know what? I'm, I think I'm getting it. I was getting my times confused with Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII is around 40 hours. Oh, at least, yeah. Um, so let's see here. 40 minus 23 is 17 for me. Ugh. God damn it, Raph. Um, and you have 35? Yeah. Uh, 12. 35 minus 20. Yeah, 12. Okay. Yeah, I can do math. All right, cool. Uh, all right, Donkey Kong Country, 1994. This epic war between donkeys and croc people forged epic alliances with rhinos, frogs, swordfish, and some birds to destroy the evil croc kingdom with their disgusting snake, bee, and starfish axis of evil. <laughs> I don't think I've ever... Disgusting snake, bee. Your disgusting bee. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, uh, oof, man, um, I'm going to go with, like, probably, like, seven hours. Yeah, I was thinking six. Yeah. Um, also a game that I absolutely suck at. Four hours. Four hours, all right, well, I'll take my three. You can take your... Th- it's a tough game, man, especially if you load that bad boy up now. Yeah, yeah. You will get so, checked, sir. All right, we are now uh, Will with 26 points, Drew with 31, 
It's an embarrassing defeat right now. All right, hit me. All right, uh, Diablo 2, year 2000. Diablo was a dick. You beat that dick, but he's back. Stronger, faster, harder, and vainier than ever. <laughs> Hunt his minions and click on them as hard as you can in order to defeat the forces of hell. Is this the sequel to the first clicker game? Oh man, that is that is a good question. Mm, I, I boy. Um, I don't know. I only hear about people like playing Diablo two for like for years. I know. I'm gonna go with uh, fuck it. I'm gonna go with fifty. Uh, I'm I'm gonna do thirty. Okay. So let's see. Thirty five. Damn. I really you thought it was more. You had 50? Yeah. Wow, that's what, 15 points? Well, to be fair, the completionist was 176 hours, so I just, uh, <laughs> yeah. I just, you know, it's, you know? Yeah, no, you know. Hey, yeah. man, I just, I just took the lead. Yeah. <laughs> Super Mario World from 1991. Peach and Bowser sneak away from the evil clutches of the dark plumber Mario, but their escape is short-lived. The mustachioed bastard employs the help of his hell steed Yoshi and murders the inhabitants of nine worlds to return his wench into captivity. <laughs> That's oh, a boy. really fucking weird way to look at it, but go, <laughs> go <laughs> Yeah, on. and it's not even like a real wench. It's a quote-unquote wench. Um, yeah. <sighs> Man, some of these games I just don't know. Uh, mm, 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 I don't know, probably like five hours. Oh um, no, I feel like uh, it's probably pushing it too. I, I was thinking, I was thinking more like uh, eight to ten. I, I'm gonna say eight. Okay. I, f I feel like this game is deceptively long. Five and a half. You fucking asshole. Dude, I can't believe it. Uh, five hours. All right, let me get you your point five, <laughs> and uh, I guess I'll take th what th uh, two point five. Because I was guessing, eh, yeah, two two point five. All right, let's see here. Uh, Journey twenty twelve. A journey. That was for me <laughs> to read. Oh shit! I'm sorry, but Go that's ahead and okay. Read it. Go Journey two thousand twelve. One of my favorite games, A Journey. Uh, all right, Five well. Out. Well, I have, no, it's my guess. That was I have your the guess. yellow, I have the yellow box, Will. What is that? What, what does that mean? Th it means that the yellow box is, uh, corresponds with the person that guesses first. Okay. I have the, I have the talking pillow. Okay. Um, so you said how long? Um, uh, four hours. Four? Yeah. Um, let's see. I've played this game enough to know. I would say two and a half. Two. Nice. <sighs> Motherfucker. All right. Point five. Oops. You and your point fives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> point five this. Yeah, seriously. Uh, all right. Vanquish 2010. <laughs> this is an appropriate description. I know. Some some take months to finish this epic story while others are fall in defeat. Uh, the dirty Russians have blown up the poopiest city on Earth, San Francisco, using a stolen space station. New York is next, but not if you have anything to say about it. Use your cyber soldier skills to slide into their home base and save the far superior city of New York from certain annihilation. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, as ironic as this is, I don't know um, because you never beat it. Still haven't beat the game. Um, <laughs> fuck. Uh, I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm gonna go with six hours. Six. Yeah. I feel like this is a nice like ten hour game. I have no frame of reference on that. Holy shit! What? You'll see. Jesus. Ah! I'm six, shocked. I, th I thought they lowballed it. I think you're cheating. I think you're a cheater. Oh, God. I think you're just sick of losing all the time, so you cheated. Never, sir. Uh, 
All right, hit, let's let's do the last one. Let's get this right. over with. Inside 2016. Oh God, I, I feel like compelled <laughs> that I have to sing this. You you do. And I ran, I ran so far away. <laughs> I just ran, I ran all night and day. Couldn't get away. Um, okay, All right. Uh, so, this is tough for me because I really don't clock these things. Uh, four hours. Okay, um, I'm going with five. Five? What do we got here? Three and a half. God damn. All right. That's so, a quick game. Yeah, I guess it is. But somehow, you managed to beat me by like one and a half points. Will, congratulations, man. You are the Playtime Pandemonium champion. Oh, God, man, it's about time I won something. How do you feel? Um, pretty content. Pretty content with that. Uh, that was a good game. And honestly, a lot of it was just straight guessing, man, because I have not played uh, Diablo 2. I have not played Super Mario World. Um Chrono Trigger. I just had to guess. There's a lot of these games I haven't played. I How played. You never played Super Mario World. Let's stop there for a second. I, I might have. Did you have a Super Nintendo? Yeah. It came with the fucking system. Not mine. I had the Killer Instinct bundle. Uh... Yep, the black cartridge. Um, okay. Okay. I, I played th- two games in entirety on this list. One game I played half of. And everything else I have not played. Okay. Let's see here. Um, I've played the demo for Max Payne. I've played the demo for Tomb Raider. I've beaten Bioshock. Uh, I've played the first 10 hours of Chrono Trigger about six times. Uh, Donkey Kong Country I've played never to completion because I suck at it. Diablo 2 I've never played. Mario World I've played a bunch, but I also suck at that. Journey we played on the show. Uh, Vanquish, um, I'm the one that who's uh, falling in defeat. <laughs> um, I, I just don't see myself circling back to that game. And uh, Inside we played on the show. Yep. So, you know, a, a decent list for me. Man, that was fun. That was fun. Um, I feel like it was a little bit more... I don't know, like it's very similar to the Metacritic Madness that we do, but yeah, I don't know, it was just nice to switch it up a little bit. Definitely. Well, I'm always looking for like different games that we can play on the show, and at some point, you know, when we uh, start having more frequent guests again, I'd like to play some of those games with the guests. Yeah, and I think that the raft scriptions certainly made it uh, pretty humorous. Definitely, definitely. So folks, if you enjoyed that, please let us know what you thought of the game. Uh, talk about it in our Discord room or shoot us an email, wdgrpodcast at gmail.com. Um, I think that pretty much brings us to the end of our show for the week, Will. It certainly does. Do you have anything else that you want to mention before we wrap this up? Um, do your research before you buy VR. And uh, if you have a local VR spot, check that place out first. Sounds good to me. And I uh, just want to take a moment to thank everybody for hitting that download button. Please subscribe to the show. Leave a rating in iTunes or wherever you download your podcast. That would be a huge help. Uh, Any and all feedback is welcome. And uh, be sure to check out our social media at WDGR Podcast at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That's at WDGR Podcast. Will, how can they find you? Will underscore gear. And you can follow me at Science Storm. And uh, once more, everybody, thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you next week. See ya. See ya.